Hello everybody and welcome to All Blaze No Glory, the podcast. This is a special bonus podcast or um, a new line of podcasts um, that I'll be running from time to time called Sir BP, which stands for Self-Indulgent Rant Bonus Pod. To start off with, I um, at the time of recording, I'm just back from the Edinburgh versus Emirate Lions game and I am really, really grumpy. In fact, I've been back for a few hours, but I'm still really, really grumpy. So I'll get onto that in a minute. But the other thing I wanted to talk about was the Worcester Warriors situation. I'm not a company law expert. I'm not going to sit here and try and analyse the uh, goings on of um, Worcester Warriors, the company. Um, But what I am concerned about is whether or not this is a recurring theme in professional sports and whether or not professional sports, particularly in Britain, are starting to grow themselves in a certain manner where... Obviously, there's demand for players' wages, and I don't grudge the players their wages. They're doing a job at the end of the day. Um, there's a demand um, for staff wages. Again, I don't grudge them those wages, but are clubs overstretching themselves? Um, you need the income. You need the fans to come in. Um, but you also need to watch what directors are drawn down and things like that as well. So there's a lot going on, and that's it's really unfortunate. I feel really bad for the players and all the staff, some of the staff that were just knocking their pan in um, for the last uh, bit of this before everything went sideways. Um, from a Scotland perspective, um, I think it's great that Duhan van der Merver has returned um, to Edinburgh. Um, I think it's even better that he's returned on a three-year deal. So I do think there's there's a positive that's come out of that. Um, what I'm more concerned about um, is not Rory Sutherland. He's, I think, off to Ulster now um, at the time of recording. And I'm not worried about him having... Um, further offers. He's a British and Irish Lions. That's going to give him some credit in the bank. Um, he's a very good, well-known um, loose head prop. And I think ultimately he may end, end up going for a paycheck in France if he doesn't return to Scotland after his Ulster contract. What I'm more concerned about is two guys who are maybe on the fringes. One who's not been capped and one who's got, I think, three caps. Um, starting off with Murray McCallum, the SRU First response after, okay, fair enough, getting Doohan, he's a big name, um, signing all that, should have been to get Murray McCallum home, either to Glasgow or to Edinburgh. Um, I think probably uh, Glasgow might be the better fit for him, Um, just certainly Glasgow fans think he's the better fit for them. Um, He's a good, hard-working player. Uh, He can play loose head and tight head, I would say, both equally well. Um which is a rare thing nowadays in the professional game. But with a World Cup coming up, it might be a good idea to get him back up, get him some playing time, see if we can get him fit, and see if he is an option um, for the World Cup. Because last World Cup, we took Simon Bergen um, and sort of pretended that he knew how to play loose head um, when sometimes, even as a specialist tight head, he struggles to do that. Uh, Murray McCallum, on the other hand, um, coming through when he was young for Edinburgh and I remember him back in the old black and red days of Edinburgh um, wore the number one shirt in my mind almost as much as he wore the number three shirt so I think he's an ideal candidate um, to return um, to Scotland and I don't know why it's not happened yet and I am worried for him because he's not a big name in terms of sort of wider recognition um, it's something that die hard Scot- Scottish fan ultras know about but he's not someone that is going to catch the eye maybe of a French club except maybe a D2 club and I think that would be bad for him I think at this stage of his career I would prefer him to be in Scotland Um, and I know he's got a family and things as well now so um, you know maybe moving about is not the best thing for him so hopefully um, the SRU will have been in touch with them and it's maybe just a case of getting everything in place and whether it's Glasgow or Edinburgh it doesn't really matter get him home get him back to Scotland if you can Um, the other boy is Finn Smith Uh, now I've not seen a lot of Finn Smith play because to be honest with you I don't watch a lot of the Premier uh, the Gallagher Premiership Um, and normally uh, on BT Sports they don't show a lot of Worcester anyway Um, and I don't go out my way to watch Premiership Club uh, Cup games or anything like that. So I don't know a lot about him, but everything I've heard about him is positive. Um, whilst we've got Finn Russell, who's arguably one of the best tens in the world, um, he is, um, to my mind, um, somebody um, who is 
not coming to the end of their career, but it's certainly um, he might get one more World Cup cycle. Um, but you'll be really, really old. Um, Johnny Sexton old. And I'm not sure whether Finn's style of play will still be able to work when he's Johnny Sexton old. So we do need to look to the future a bit. We've had the Blair Kinghorn thing, and I know Scotland fans hate it. He's doing okay. Um, We've got Savala, who, um, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know uh, I am really high on. Um, And we've got Ross Thompson. Um, as well as uh, Adam Hastings. Now, Hastings seems to have fallen out of favour for whatever reason. Um, we're now taking to playing games outside the international window. Um, so we need to have decent tens available on our doorstep. Now, I heard um, on the Scottish Rugby podcast that there's a possibility that Finn Russell might consider moving back to Scotland after his French deals up because... Um, you know, he uh, has a family now and maybe he'll want to move back to Scotland. That being said, he seems to be getting on well in France and there was talks that now that he's speaking to the coaches in Racing, um, he's getting more rest and he's a lot happier and he's the fittest he's ever been. So, to my mind, he he's no guarantee to come back to Scotland anyway. So again, SRU, get your paper check out. Take out some of it out of Dodson's wages and try and get Finn Smith up here, even if it's for a year. If I mean... At the end of the day, the international game now has become about trapping players as much as it's become about actually winning things, Um, particularly for Scotland who um, have low player pools and the pathways seem to be clogged up and there's less clubs um, putting out twos and things like that, so there's less development. Um, Get Finn Smith up here, get him up here soon. Name him in the in the autumn test squad if he if he's if he's as good as people say he is, and get him a cap against Australia potentially. And um, if he's been playing ten his whole career, his whole pro career, and he's a young man, then the best thing we could do is try him at ten against. Fair enough, it's not ideal playing your first cap against Australia, um, when you're a young guy. But get him in, um, and give him a go, um. I personally am really hoping that Savala will get capped um, in the autumn, but if Finn Smith is is better than Savala, and as I say, I've not really seen him enough to compare the two, then we need Finn Smith in Scotland or we need him to be capped soon. Um, And getting him up and getting him capped against Australia is a perfect time to do it because at the end of the day, we're not going to have Finn and we're not going to have Adam Hastings. We've only got Blair Kinghorn, who I know turns the stomach of at least 50% of Scotland, um, and uh, and uh, Charlie Savala and Ross Thompson. Um, now, for me, by the way, when I say turns the stomach of, of Blair Kinghorn, I think Blair Kinghorn um, is a good 10. Um, I think he's a good rugby player, and I think the thing... I think the thing is that perhaps because he's still new to 10 at the professional level and then it's a big step up to the test level, he makes some mistakes and he's not been put in the game plan that suits his game still. Um, even tonight in the game that we just watched, he was with Pargos, which I don't think suits him um, because I think Blair Kinghorn needs a Velikot who's going to fire him the ball quickly and move move the team around the park himself and kind of take charge of Blair Kinghorn. Whereas I think Savala can kind of take charge of the game himself, and that's the point of difference between the two, which is why I think Savala's got the higher ceiling. Anyway, I've ranted enough about Savala. Um, just finally, uh, this uh, the game tonight between Edinburgh and, and the Lions um, it was... It was back to the days where uh, I think we just we were described as having a soft underbelly um, in Scotland. Um, Glasgow have had it this year when they've been pumped by teams um, that they shouldn't be pumped by, and Edinburgh tonight lost a team that they should never have lost to. Now that team deserved to win. The Lions deserved to win the way the game was played. I normally come away from from tight losses, and there's you know maybe if a ref decision went this way or that way, and. Um, I do think there was one slightly harsh ref decision where Nell was done for going off his feet when the other player stepped back and then the Lions done the same thing and weren't pinged for it in the crucial last minute. But I think, to be fair, us kicking the points and getting a draw 
would have maybe been unfair on the Lions because they were actually clinical when they had the ball. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what's going on in Scottish rugby at the moment. Um, this is a rant about rugby. I appreciate that I've done a rugby podcast and I'm still intending on doing lots of podcasts, but Scottish rugby needs to have a look at itself. Um, one thing I would say, um, recording this, uh, at the time I'm recording this, we're less than 40 hours away from uh, Scotland women's playing their first game. I'm hoping I'm going to find some way to watch. I'm going down to the NFL this weekend um, in London. Um, so good luck to the girls. I'm sure none of you listen to this podcast, but I really, really hope you guys do well. Um, looking at the team sheet, it looks pretty pretty tasty like in terms of, of quality. And I, I think you guys can go out there and, and beat Wales and hopefully progress in the tournament and show... Um, you know, show the world what you can do at the end of the day. Um, it's a big achievement qualifying uh, the SRU again. It's something that are behind in, in terms of, of uh, funding and things like that. We need to get behind the women's team um, because, you know, I think they've got the potential uh, to, to, to go on and achieve great things in the women's game, maybe deliver us a Six Nations in 10 years' time if we can really get behind them. We've got some good quality players there and we can develop more of them. Uh, I've seen a few women's games um, at the club level and there are tons of players there that have the potential um, with the right coaching. Um, I mean, you're seeing younger players stepping in and have got great ability on the floor, great ability to tackling, good kicking ability and if we can put money into the women's game, we can scout scout these people and put them on the right path. We give them help with their nutrition and all that sort of thing and, and get them there. Um, I uh, coach a women's ice hockey team and it's pretty much the same story in, in women's ice hockey. The potential is there to win stuff and to, to win big um, with these players that you, you see players in and they've got a high ceiling, but they just don't get the coaching, or, or sorry, the funding, not the coaching, the coaches work their ass off, but they don't get the funding to achieve that next level. And that's what, you know, the women's game in, in the SRU needs. Um, anyway, um, this was a rant, so uh, I uh, will keep it short. Um, thanks if you listened. Um, equally, if you sh- have shut off by now, that's fine as well. It will count as a listen. Um, I'm going to be releasing the podcast next week, just sort of reviewing my couple of weekends away um, to Tottenham um, to to see the NFL, including a, a short review on um, going to visit Leighton Orient as part of the list. Um, I'll probably release a um, written piece on, on that. Um, so I hope you all have a great weekend if you're listening to this over the weekend or a great week, whatever you're doing. Thank you so much for listening to me. I'm sorry for ranting, um, but I guess that's the theme. Cheers.